name's Ling with Skybrook Farm, and this is a place where I talk about my knitting and spinning and a lot of what we're doing here on the farm with my three sons and my husband here in North Carolina. We raise registered Romney and Shetland sheep and blend it with our alpaca wool, and, or fiber, rather. Anyway, but uh, so yeah, so this is just about kind of things we're getting up to, the creative process and how we create different garments and then just exploring the farm. So yeah, so first things first, so I can hear voices downstairs, so it's kind of distracting. I've tried this like the third time, I'm not redoing it. So however it comes out is just how it comes out. Um, this is the metamorphic sweater that we talked about on the last episode by Andrea Mallory. I didn't want to record until I actually had a finished object. It was very motivating to get it done. And then there was a lot of focus on the tour de fleece, which I'll get into next. But so I love how it came out. Again, this was, um, the color work is Three Waters Farm on Sunday Ruse that I did as hand spun. And then the taupe color, which is like the cuffs and this like faux seam is uh, our Shetland base, which is, it's just nice to see which face on the farm created your sweater. And so yeah, I love how it came out. The colorway, like I said, the progression, I don't think even though the sleeve, like one sleeve is obviously more blue and one is red, I, I love the way it turned out. This is not the nut color that I normally gravitate towards in my own wardrobe to wear on a daily basis, but I'm glad to branch out and, and see how it fits. I don't think that this will, at least immediately, this will not be a sweater that I immediately reach for. One, it's because I sized it before I was pregnant. <laughs> so I've got to get slim back down so it'll fit. It, it does fit. It just doesn't fit with as much ease as I would like. Um, especially like around the bust. There's a lot of extra room here in the sides and then it gets tight again in the hips. There's no waist shaping in many of Andrew Mallory powder, Mallory's patterns that I'm familiar with. I just said her name all wrong, but I do love it and it'll fit better over time. It is really warm. So if I do a mid theme <laughs> wardrobe change and just pop back in a different shirt, just ignore me. I had plenty of my hand spun left over this is that colorway, hopefully it'll focus there for you. Um, this was what was left out of the two skeins. I had two that were identical to this or roughly the same, and so I had plenty left over. So I'll use that for a separate project. And of course, this is our sheep's wool, so I just kept pulling the skeins out. I have to just remember to keep up with our inventory, I guess. So yeah, I love how it came out and hope you knit one for yourself. Um, next was Tour de Fleece, which I just had a blast doing. more spinning done than I've gotten in a year. It was challenging at times with a newborn and I felt kind of selfish with those like self spins that could be sleeping on me, but we're not, we can't really do anything. I can't move all those cute, adorable baby snuggles. It's like, I saw a meme that was um, on my way to cry. <laughs> the mom will snuggle with me all day. That's about the story of our life the last couple of weeks. It's just snuggling a baby and spinning. So with the spins, I was talking to you before about the massive, Oh, 12 ounce spin um, that I was doing. Each one was a different colorway all through into the world. If you wanna go back to the other episode and see them before they were spun, or I'll insert footage here. But I think that this just turned out beautifully. Like I love the variegation. I love the way that the spin came out. It was a lot of fun to spin. And um, I'm surprised honestly about how much purple it is. I mean, I know there was purple in every braid, so I really shouldn't be surprised, but I also thought it was pretty balanced with blues and grays, and it is. It just overall has like this very tur purple feel, and which is fine. I'm just, I don't really know why I'm surprised, I just am. So when I think about the Traveler's Shawl, I wasn't thinking about a purple shawl. I was thinking more about like a bluish moody with some purple and some undertones. 
So this will be a pleasant surprise. I think I ended up with about 950 yards. I think that's plenty of room to do the shawl. If not, even after all the video, I went back and watched it. There was the original braid that I was gonna spin up that didn't get spun. And then the other one that was the Moscow Mule, which was the lighter blue, which is actually right, um, right here, actually. Sorry, like I just saw it because I was planning on doing something else with it. So technically I could spin this with the other braid. It just won't look exactly the same. I have part of a single of a couple of these so I could kind of put those together and just see how it goes and maybe like alternate rows if that was necessary, but hopefully this is enough. The other one that I spun up was this two ply and it's a uh, Polworth. I think it's Polworth and Silk. I couldn't find the tag from earlier, so I'll try and post in the notes if I can find it. If not, it's just, it's just a mystery fiber. Um, I mean, it's here somewhere. I just don't know exactly where. In the move, these are things that, I know it sounds like we just moved. We even did move, we moved here about a year ago, year and a half now. And my craft room, even though it's not really a craft room, it's like one giant bonus room up here, has my husband's office and my stuff to give my own little space to work in. So I have my loom, a lot, obviously the fiber and our yarn. What you can't see is that there's tons of bins that have our farm yarn and giant stackable bins. And then on the other side, there's another shelf that has more of my tools and more fiber to spin. So in these, there's still boxes that are, un, that are not unboxed yet that would have like a label for this, which is in like my project journal. So a lot of detail you probably didn't need, but anyway, to start that process. So this was a two ply that I did for the tour. Mason would like to join us. You wanna say hello? Hi. So along with the tour, I met some wonderful women at the Fearless Fiber studio. I call it a studio, but it's like it's Fearless Fibers in Clemens, North Carolina. And it was a wonderful group. We met on Saturdays and joined as a team. And so part of her store, I got this as an acquisition and it's as if I needed more fiber, but I saw this and I thought about it all week. It's a gray blue face Lester. Um, with little sparkles of bright colors. I thought that as I spin it, it would kind of mute out those really bright colors. I think it'll be just gorgeous. I also got a cute adorable mug that's downstairs because I used it this morning. It's like a picture of a sheep on one side and a llama on the other. And I just love it. It's got like a pink glaze on the inside. It was just so cute. And I had broke my other favorite coffee mug that reminded me of the farm. So I put that one in, I got that one. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is my final lineup for the Tour de Fleece. Out of all the fiber that I spun, some of it was a couple of singles that I already started, so I only counted the yardage for the singles on the ply, or whatever singles weren't done that I actually had to do. So, um, but this was that big monster spin that was mixed wools of, um, was it BFL? I don't know, a couple of different ones. And then this is a Falkland, this was a Polworth. Um, this was a singles. I already spun uh, one of the, this is another Three Waters Farm. This is one of those, um, it's a singles yarn that I was gonna do for the broomstick or the broom sedge. Uh, it's like a summer top and it's made out of a singles yarn. And my friend and I were gonna do it together. I could never get my singles right. So I spun another four ounce of this somewhere back here. Here's one of my first ones, and I'm going on a small tangent here, but I spun these singles way too fine for the shirt. So, and I'd spun the other four ounces for, um, of this before, and it was great, and I never spun the second four ounces. So now I have enough yardage for that top. So I did that for the tour. And yeah, all of those lovely yarns. So yeah, I did get very hot in that sweater, so obviously I, I took it off. Um, as far as next projects go, so then I have I have this, the ne the socks still on the needles, um, but I've only done like an extra row or two since the last time I showed them because I was pretty focused on the sweater, so I haven't made much progress. I didn't feel like bringing those back out. Um, but I did want to talk to you about this project that I'd had done, I'd started previously. This is the, I keep wanting to say it's the Alito or the Alitas shawl, but it's not. It's like A-I-L-O. I'll put it in the show notes below or I'll put a picture here, but it's a beautiful shawl pattern by Melody. And I can't think of that name either, but it has this beautiful, I don't even know if you can see it. It's like garter stitch plus like a lace motif. And then it goes back to garter stitch. And I'll try and get you a close up of what that looks like, but it uses the Ploto, Plotolope uh, yarn, which is in this, in these cakes. 
these unspun yarn cakes, which this is the first time I've ever used these. It's been kind of an interesting process. I started this before the move. Everything is pre or post move, but it's not a project that's really easy to work around with children. And that's just part of my own, not that I have anxiety, but my own anxious part of someone's gonna kick it or someone's gonna knock it off, which isn't a big deal because you just reattach the singles with a split slice. And so her pattern, she has done it in uh, brown bases and I chose this color palette, more of like a cream and gray Hopefully that shows up for you. Um, but I went from like white to light gray, darker, and then ending in this charcoal. In her pattern, it's more of a brown base. She also goes from light to dark. No, I'm sorry, dark to light in her progressive of her shawl. And I wanna go from light to dark. That way the biggest section is an asymmetrical shawl will end up in this charcoal color, which is opposite of what I've already started. And I think I'll like it just for myself better. A cream edge, not that it's going to get dirty, but to me it reminds me like it would show dirt. If it gets picked after this, like I feel like I would see the mistakes more. And I just like the darker look better. So we're gonna reverse the sweater or the color order and see how it goes. So I'm gonna cast this back on relatively soon. And that'll be the next project that I work on to have a shawl going. So I'll have my socks, this shawl, and then one other project, or I guess one, not one other, there's two other projects that I'm really anxious to catch on. If once you're here for a while, we keep doing these. I'm more of a process knitter. I care more about the yarn journey that we've had or what I've learned from a project more than about the completed object. Even though we all love completed objects, and that is the ultimate goal is to complete them once we've started them. But I just love with working with new products, new or not new products, but new yarns in a new technique. And it's the research of how to do it. And But now I'd like to cast on my third shawl. So after I finish this, pro not finish, but at the same time as having this product going, because I can't really take this with me. Unless you guys have suggestions on how to carry around these plates around, which I don't have a good way. I mean, maybe they'd be fine in a project bag, but I'm afraid they would either felt on the outside or just completely unravel. So I feel like what's best is just to keep this, I don't even know where, on my nightstand maybe, but then I'm afraid that my middle son, who's three, who loves to touch things, might do something with this, which I guess is not the end of the world. They're here to learn too. But this would just be an at-home knit. I don't think I'd, I would take this anywhere. If you're only working with one color at a time, unless it's like a transition period where you're like split splicing between one color and another and you're constantly breaking for a few rows. And um, so yeah, there's this one that I think will be at home. So the next project I wanna do is called the Albini Cardigan. And I bought this yarn years ago when I saw another podcaster working on it. It is a singles yarn. And it's beautiful. Let's see if I can that'll show up for you there. And then this is, all right, that's actually the label there. And so this says that it was done in 2017. And the, my confusion this was in my moment of panic is that this is a 50 gram skein. And in her pattern, she calls for 100 gram skeins that are 361 yards or something like that. So I didn't think I had enough yarn. And so Lo and behold, this yarn is now discontinued. They don't make it anymore. So I was trying to find on Ravelry to see if someone was de-stashing. No one, of course, is. And I messaged the one person who said they had like three skeins. I don't even know if it would be the same batch to look. But in the end, I did some calculations. So if it's like 360 per 100 gram skein divided by two tons, I have a total of eight skeins here. That gives me roughly 1,400 and something yards. And for my size, I think I was gonna do the 30 or sorry 41 inch bus size but I want it a little bit bigger and I think it says it's a two inch a two inch overlap with a button band I have to go back and check the pattern but it is something like that which means I'd have some kind of ease and give and yes that was my plan so for that I think I need like 1300 yards that gives me a hundred yards to play with in case I make a mistake so this will be cast on maybe today, probably tomorrow. And yeah, I've been wanting to the Albini for a while. It just looks like a classic cardigan. One of those ones that sits up high on your shoulder so it's not gonna be like you're fiddling with it and pulling it up all the time. It has some waist shaping to it to give you kind of a flattering figure, which is always helpful. And then I'm excited about pockets. I love a pullover. It's like my, I mean, I love sweater pullovers, but I like the idea of a cardigan. Also that I can have it vent in the front too, just unbuttoned. So, and I have a lot of cardigans that are not handmade and I would like to make one of my own and just try that out. 
So the next project I want to work on after the socks to have a portable project to take around with me is a pair of Latvian mittens. And so I got this book used and I thought it would be a how to knit the Latvian mittens. And that is not what this book is. This book is a essentially a, a pattern guide for different styles of the Latvian mittens. So in each, each page it has, sorry, in each page it has someone, uh, an example of it knitted up and then a chart for you to read with the assumption that you know basic construction of the Latvian mitten. I was hoping for something that would say like on row 70, put X amount of stitches on, you know, on hold for a thumb gusset and then knit this pattern a couple of times. That is not what this book is. There is a small section in the back that gives instructions on yarn selections and a general guide, but it doesn't go into enough detail for me since I've never done this before or knit mittens either. <laughs> so quite an aggressive project for our first pair of mittens. So in to make up for that, because there's no classes local to me and there's honestly not a lot of content on YouTube either. So I found another book that's actually being, it's a pre-order, it's not released yet. I'll put a link below and it comes in on Tuesday, today is Sunday. So maybe by the time this post, <laughs> I'll already have it. And I'll do a review of that book, but it's supposed to be really good about just giving basic, not basic, but detailed instructions on step-by-step -step construction on the Latvian mittens. So um, this will be my next cast on after the socks. And I'm really excited about it. There's a lot of beautiful patterns. I'm not sure that the Latvian mitten as a whole is, you know, is my favorite style of sock, even though I find the pattern work, I mean, just, I mean, who just doesn't love that? I mean, I'd want all the pairs. I mean, like it, my thought was if I got, you know, verse enough in the pattern, so I'm probably holding it down too low, that I could still do the gusset and then just cut it off here and then not have the top part of the mitten and just have it kind of like a fingerless glove, but I'd have to know how to do this bottom part to get there. So I don't know that makes sense. I'm sure if someone is an actual mitten knitter that all of that was very noobish <laughs> in my terminology but we'll but again that's my goal my ultimate goal is to be able to knit the pair in like the three shaded color work which is kind of intimidating too and see how it goes so for this project i picked these four colors i picked two different shades of green and then kind of a natural color and a black and all of these are, well, three of these are this um, Yorkshire Spinner Signature 4 Ply. And this is a 75% wool, 25% nylon. And yeah, I think it's gonna be a great fit for this. And the last one is a ultra fine merino, or not merino, just ultra fine wool, 100% superwash. I'm not a huge fan of superwash just because of well, to be that person, the impact on the environment. I appreciate what it does and how it makes it more wearable and just easier to care for, but I really don't like the chemicals. And they didn't have, the yarn store didn't have another option for a color that would match this green that would be in the same weight. That would be a good fit. I, it's long story short, that's why I always do, right? So anyway, so those are the four I'm gonna do for my Latvian mittens. I will cast this on when I finish the socks which I feel like this will be a good way for me to get things done. If I was to have a product to do after this knit sweaters, I mean, besides the 50, you know, Q pattern or whatever on Ravelry that I have, just having it planned out, this is the next one to help me push through the other one. So as soon as those socks come off, I will cast these on. So in the last one, I talked about how I'm a self-taught knitter and I pinch my yarn. I have been actively working on trying to learn to re-tension the yarn between my fingers so that way when I'm doing a knit or a purl, it makes it easier. I'll insert footage, if not this video, in the next one. <laughs> you care about my progress, more of like a record for myself about the progress and how much easier that's getting to go from nip to pearl and then just overall tension. I didn't want to do it during this, I was going to point out how I've taken it off, but on the metamorphic because I didn't want to change my tension on a sleeve in the middle of the project. So, or on the socks because it's also in ribbing. So I'll do it on the next one and make that a goal just to force myself to learn how to tension properly. It's not that it doesn't work. I just want an easier method of being able to go from knit to purl, and my current method doesn't work for me to do that. So those are my projects. I've got the Albini, the other shawl, um, the Alita, I'm gonna call it, even though I'm not sure that's actually the name of it. So the Albini, the Alita, the Latvian mittens, and then the shawl. And I think that those four are gonna keep me busy for a while. <laughs> so come along with me, we'll see how it goes.